Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So, you might have seen just recently that I have been hitting a lot of gap jumps and bigger jumps as well. And I wanted to make this video today to explain to you guys how I've all of a sudden just gotten over the fear of riding gap jumps. Now, this has been something that ever since I started riding, we all have aspirations to ride gaps, to ride big jumps, to look cool. But the reality of it is, we don't start and we don't go straight to these sorts of jumps that are like the ones behind me. We start on the small tables and because I've ridden tables and things like that for a while, you kind of get used to it and you kind of sort of like take for granted that they are safe and if you didn't go quick enough and landed in the middle, then you're not going to get hurt. You're just going to roll down the rest of them. And when you are ready to get onto the next stage of riding gap jumps, it is so scary because there's a huge gap in the middle and generally speaking the takeoffs are a lot steeper and a lot bigger so this line of jumps behind me here is the main line at twisted oaks and i rode it for the very first time on tom's channel and he helped me through it coached me through it but there's only so much that he can help me with when it comes to doing it it's down to me and you go through loads of thought processes in your head and then when you actually come to doing it it's really easy and you're like oh how have I like gone through all that worry all of that overthinking and then when I've actually done it it's it's fine and I wanted to sort of explain to you guys how I managed to go through and like allow myself to send these gap jumps because this this line here isn't the only one I've ridden so far I've also ridden the first two gap jumps at Zoo to Laws which are pretty similar to this to be honest but again it's still gap jumps and like I said it is really tricky to make the transition from riding tables to doing gap jumps. I just want to show you the line really because I will ride it today, I want to keep sessioning it and practicing it but so this is the first gap jump here, that's the takeoff, this is the landing and also as well what is different is riding a line of gaps as opposed to just a gap on its own because with this line in particular it slopes around a bit of a corner and not only that you've got four jumps in a row and you've got to maintain your speed and you've got to regulate your speed as well and that again is one of the tricky things about learning to ride a line of gaps so you've got this first one here which i've just shown you i'll go down to the second one now this is the second one as you can see the gap is a tiny bit bigger and the takeoff has a slight flick to it as well and then it's the third one that got me last time because it is a slight hip towards the left and if you were to hit it straight you'd go a bit off track and i never ridden a hip before and i didn't know if i would actually even turn in the air so that for me was a really scary thought but actually when you ride it without realizing somehow the bike did turn in the air and it was actually a lot easier than i thought um, but let me just show you this take off here landing is here so it is quite a large gap but obviously you don't tend to notice the gaps getting bigger on this particular line because it does run downhill so you do get the speed and then finally the last one is this one here which is the biggest one here we go take off again a lot steeper and then the gap is a lot bigger and the landing's really long as well so the reason that i tried to do this line of gaps is because Compared to other gap jumps, the takeoffs are a lot mellower. Even though to me they are still a lot steeper, they are a lot mellower compared to other lines. But the things that helped me overcome riding gaps were to not fixate on it. So obviously when I came to film this video with Tom, the goal was to ride this line. But what I found is that as soon as I get here, because I think I need to do this line, it creates a load of pressure in my head and I just get worked up about it and come to the here, try and roll into it, not getting it, mind blown black and it's just a, a right mess. So what I tend to do is just ride something that I know I can ride, whether that's tables, drops, anything in the park basically, to get you warmed up, to get you stoked and then you feel ready to come and attack something new. Another thing which I realised that I do recently is in the past, when I've gone to ride something perhaps that is a little bit scarier than 
what I'm comfortable with, I end up sort of stalling and the more I look at it, the more I end up talking myself out of it. But recently I've managed to just get over that initial stage and just drop into something and try it because before I'd spend like an hour sitting there contemplating it and then when I eventually did it I'd realize actually I've wasted so much time beforehand because what I've actually done is really easy but recently I've managed to get over that sooner and that's a mental thing and the how I do it is I kind of visualize myself getting over the jump as opposed to thinking of everything that could go wrong because beforehand I was sat at the top thinking oh my gosh I could crash I'll land in the middle what if I don't make it over what if I nosedive all these things whereas now I think right I can do it. I believe in my ability I know the technique I know that when I jump the bike that's something that I don't have to think about anymore so why am I thinking it's going to go wrong um so then if you just visualize yourself going over it then you know it's going to go well and you believe in yourself and I feel like that belief in yourself that you can see yourself getting over the jump or the obstacle or the drop or whatever it is then it just gives you a bit more confidence to attack it and you get to the point where you're ready to hit something a lot sooner something else that I've done in the past that helps get over the fear is to pretend that there isn't a gap because Generally speaking, I can ride jumps that are the same size that are tables. So really the only difference is the fact that there's the middle taking out of it. So just pretend like there's a middle in it and that whole mind game of the fact that you're riding a gap jump sort of goes away a little bit because you've sort of pictured that there's a, a filler or actually even just not picture it and actually put something in the middle to take that fear away. Because then once you've ridden it once, and you've kind of taken the danger element away because you've put like a pallet in the middle or a hay bale or something like that, then you know the next time that you've gotten over it once, so there's no reason why you can't get over it again. And then you take out the hay bale or the, the pallet or whatever it is, and then you just send it. Another thing which I really find helps me is that if I ask Tom to do it first, because then you can see the technique and you can really watch how someone does it and the speed they go into it as well and that helps too and also following someone perhaps i followed tom into lines before because i know that if i keep the same distance between myself and his back wheel if he can get over it then there's no reason why i can't get over it as well right i hope those few little tips have can help you guys and you can apply the same technique if you're at a bike park thinking of doing a scarier obstacle co obstacle course a scarier obstacle jump drop whatever it is then those are the processes that I go through. But generally speaking, you know, there's only so much you can do to take the fear away. There's always gonna be an element of fear because what we do is a dangerous sport and it is scary and things can go wrong. No matter how safe you try and make it, there's always that one time where something might not go as you first originally planned. But if you go through all those things and you try and make it as safe as possible, then you should be fine and you should be able to get yourself over these scary obstacles and send it. Another thing that I really want to point out as well is that I've ridden this line before and I'm going to ride it again for you guys in a minute and I'm going to hit some more gap jumps today at Twisted Oaks or at Twisted Oaks. Um, but I'm petrified to do this again because although the jumps are still the same, the environment around you changes. It is slightly windy today and it is a bit damper than it was when I first done it. And no matter how many times you've ridden something, sometimes when you come to a session, things might not go your way. You might not be feeling as confident, you might be a little bit tired, you might be hungry, you might have had a really rubbish day at work and not feeling into it. So don't beat yourself up if you've ridden something in the past that you've found easy and then you come back to it and you can't do it again. Just because you've done it once doesn't mean you're always going to be able to do it. And that's the thing that I really struggle with sometimes is that I think, oh, I should be able to do this. I've done it before. But it's human nature and naturally things don't go the way you want it all the time. So the only thing you can do is just practice, 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 because essentially getting over fear is being able to be more confident and growing your ability on the bike and the only way you're going to do that is if you practice and that doesn't necessarily mean practice just gap jumps it can be just practicing a tiny little table because it might mean that that table because it is smaller and less scary you might be able to get the technique a little bit better on there so when you do come to ride a gap jump you find it easier 
anyway, enough talking now. I'm gonna ride this line for you guys, or try to. Right, so the important things for me to be able to complete this line are to have my markers. So my start position is this post, and I know that if I roll from this position to here, then that is the perfect speed. I also have my braking markers as well because this line is quite fast and if I didn't break then I'd just overshoot the jumps and it's so important like I said with a line of jumps that you learn to regulate your speed so with that being said <laughs> now the pressure's on I'm gonna try and ride this line okay right I think I'm only gonna do the first two because that third one's a hit one two perfect right and that's another thing as well, build up. Like you don't feel like you're locked in as soon as you drop in because you're really not. Like it's better to stop if you're not comfortable to get used to it and then you can do the full line. So now I've hit the first two, that's taken that like fear away from doing a gap. So it's time to do the third. Third one, let's get it. it works for me anyway so hopefully it can work for you guys there we go then so for me to hit that again it was super scary because it is a tiny bit windy today and wind really does put me off but i kind of went through those processes that i spoke about at the start of this video and managed to just do it i broke it down which is really important for me because the scary jump i find is the third one because it is a slight hip but actually when you ride it you don't even feel it but because you know it is a slight hip it just puts you off i don't know why it just does but i broke it down i rode the first two to get the fear of the actual gap out of the way and then it's just thinking about right it's a tiny hip so i've got to turn a little bit and it's it just gives you less to think about and yeah stoked on that super fun the last jump is actually the biggest but for some reason when it gets past that third jump i'm so excited to hit that last one because it's so much like it's it's straight it's nice it's cool perfect i'm gonna do it one more time actually i'm not gonna say that i'm gonna do it again to make sure it wasn't a fluke and then uh, we'll see what other gaps and stuff we can find in the park God, the feeling is unreal when you do that. Oh, it's, it's, it feels so good to finally be able to do some cool stuff. Full speed ahead. there we go then i hope these things make sense for starters because i know i've like rambled on a little bit in this video but there was just so many things that as i was talking i was thinking of new things that i do that perhaps i didn't think of before um but i hope that they make sense and i hope that you can use them to apply to your own riding and perhaps you'll find it easier if you're coming to do a scary feature gap jump whatever it is then perhaps you'll find it easier to overcome the fear. Um, but if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, put your comments down below, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.